the Lord. God bless you. My name is Minister Red. I'm the pastor of Christ Our Life Ministries located in Augusta, Georgia on 308 Rose Street, directly behind the Walmart Lowe's on Bobby Jones Expressway, Interstate 520 heading west. I want to thank you for joining me for my Sunday morning service, amen. I want to thank you for joining my members, amen, Brother Roland and Sister Brittany Peachy, Sister Selena and her beautiful husband Stan, Brother Harry Evans, amen, and we want to remember my sister, amen, Sister Beverly Conyers Evans, who went home to be with the Lord on March the 4th, amen, she was a pillar of this ministry, and she will always be remembered, amen, every time my whole service she will be shown, she will be acknowledged, just like Jesus said to the woman that washed his feet with the alabaster box of oil. Whatever this ministry shall be preached, it shall be told as a memorial <clears throat> under her. And just like here at Christ Our Life Ministries, Sister Beverly was to me the same way the woman with the alabaster box of oil was to Jesus when she anointed his body for the burial. Sister Beverly used to anoint this ministry with her faithfulness in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining my sister church, amen. Spirit of Liberty's ministries, pastor by the phenomenal minister Kenya King, and his beautiful wife, Sister Donna King. Pastor King, you spoke beautifully this morning, my friend. You spoke beautifully. You was all in my, in my message today. I'm going to touch on some of the things that you spoke about this morning in today's message. In the name of Jesus. Join Pastor King every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. and every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. to be blessed by the word of God. <clears throat> I'm trying to get over this cold in the material, but I'm not going to let this cold stop me from bringing the word of God. I can tell you that. Ain't no cold strong enough to keep me out of the pulpit from bringing God's people a word that they need to hear. I am on YouTube. I am on YouTube, amen. There are over 200 messages on my YouTube channel. You are the Join me on them messages, amen. Just type in Roderick Red, hit the search button. I will put, come up looking like this. Over 200 anointed words of God to bless you with in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Today's message. Today's message. Christ, God's investment. Christ is God's investment. John 3 and 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only, his one and only begotten son. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal everlasting life. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting eternal life. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, I want to thank you for another opportunity to come up for your presence and to tell you that we love you. You mean more to us than anything. We are yours. We are yours. We are yours. Forever yours. In the name of Jesus. God, thank you for waking us up this morning. Starting us on our way. Putting us in our right mind to want to spend time with you. And not with the world. Oh God, we love you. Thank you God right now for coming in and healing my voice because I'm going to teach this word today whether my voice wants to line up or not I'm going to teach this word because you gave it to me to teach and your people need to hear it it might be my voice that they recognize whether I'm coming out of a soul 
a, a, a cold or not. The word says to be instant. Preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. In the name of Jesus. I'm going to be just that today. It might be my voice that they recognize and it might be my face that they know. But let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord. My strength and my redeemer. It's in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you, Brother Chuck. I love you. Thank you for brother joining your baby brother this morning. Hallelujah. Christ, God's investment. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him. I like that word, whoever. You know, the word whoever means nobody's not included. Whoever means everybody is included in the gift that God gave to the world. And all they got to do is believe in him and they will not perish, but they will have eternal everlasting life in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Christ, God's investment. Investment is the process of investing something of value for profitable gains. The word of God is valuable. The word of God is valuable. And God has invested his word in the whoever believes in him. Don't act like you don't know nothing about investment, but I'm not going to get ahead of myself because we're going to teach this thing today. Hallelujah. Here we go. Let's start this thing off here in 1 John 4 and 7 to see why God made an investment into a race of people that are not worthy to receive something of value. 1 John 4 and 7. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. 1 John 4 and 8 says, For God is love. God, he that knoweth not love, knoweth not God, for God is love. That's what 1 John 4 and 8 says. He that knoweth not love, knoweth not God, for God is love. Loving anything, loving anything can lead you, can lead to your heart possibly being broken. Loving anything can lead to your heart possibly being broken. But did you know? Hallelujah. Because God is love. No matter how many ways you break his heart, it's only going to come back to love in the first place. That's why God can invest into something that is wretched and so foul because God knows that when he invests himself, he knows that he's putting value into the thing that has no value in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Isaiah 55 and 11 says, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper. Hallelujah. I'm going to make an investment into something that ain't no good in the name of Jesus. And when I make this investment, when I invest my word into the life of whosoever believes in it, it shall prosper in the thing, in the whosoever, where to I send it, if they'll just believe it. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 
so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. Hallelujah. My God, when the word of God goes forth, it shall not return unto him void. Hallelujah. Jonah thought he was going to run from the Ninevites, uh, but the problem was, uh, was Jonah had received the word that had gone forth out of the Lord's mouth. I know Jonah jumped on the ship to Tarsus, but hallelujah, he ended up coming back on the ship called a big fish in the name of Jesus, because it shall prosper in the thing where to I sent it. God bless you, Sister Selena. I love you today. We talking about Christ, God's investment. God then invested his son into us, hallelujah, who are wretched, uh, unforgiving, uh, hallelujah, mean, uh, evil thoughts, continuously, always creatures. God still chose, because God is love, he still chose to invest his word into us, hallelujah. And loving anything can lead to your heart possibly being broken in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Romans 10 and 8 says, but what saith it? The word is not thee, even in thy mouth. Hallelujah. And in thy heart, in the name of Jesus, that is the word of faith which we preach. 2 Timothy 4 and 2 again. Preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke with all long suffering in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The word is not thee even in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we preach. Hallelujah. Oh yes, Sister Selena. And Christ brings the greatest return on your time and money and life. Oh, yes, he does. Hallelujah. God made an investment in you. The investment has been made. The investment has been deposited. Hallelujah. They asked Peter, what must we do to be saved? Peter said, repent and be back. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin and you shall receive the investment. Hallelujah. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You shall receive the investment. You shall receive the process of investing something of value for profitable gain. Hallelujah. God has gained a bunch of children through baptism in the name of Jesus. He has received a bunch of children through, hallelujah, repentance in the name of Jesus. They have received the Holy Ghost. They have received the deposit. The investment has been deposited in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Romans 12 and 3. How do I know? Romans 12 and 3 tells me. Romans 12 and 3 says, God have dealt. God has invested to every man the measure of faith. God has invested to every man the measure of faith. God has made an investment in every man. Acts 10 and 34 says, God is not a respecter of persons. Uh-uh, everybody. Everybody got this investment. Everybody's got this investment. Hallelujah. Whether or not you want to walk by, whether or not you want to believe in it. Oh, yeah, Pastor King. Hallelujah. Everybody got that investment. Hallelujah. Whether they want to believe it or whether they don't want to believe it. See, Pastor King, that's the thing. Everybody got the investment according to Romans 12 and 3. God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Notice it does not say God has dealt to every believer. 
Uh, it don't say that. It says God has dealt, uh, God has invested uh, in every man the measure of faith. Whether or not they want to believe the word of God has nothing to do with the fact that the word of God says uh, in Romans 12 and 3 that he has invested uh, into every man the measure of faith. God has made an investment in every man. He calls the investment Faith. He calls the investment faith. Hallelujah. And then Hebrews 11 and 6 says that without this investment, without this investment, it is impossible. Hallelujah. It is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe in the investment and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Through the investment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We walk by faith and not by sight. From now on, when you read your Bible, you can say we walk by God's investment and not by sight. God's investment comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. In the name of Jesus, God calls the investment faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, here we go. Watch this right here. In Matthew chapter 14, verse 25 through 31. In the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto the disciples walking on the sea. And when he saw and when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit, and they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, be of good cheer, it is I, the investment, be not afraid. He said, it's me, the investment, be not afraid. I am the word of God made flesh. I am the son of God. I am the outer resurrection life of Jesus. Be not afraid, it is I, the investment. See, when you're afraid of something, you won't invest into it. Hallelujah. It is I. Be not afraid. And Peter answered the investment and said, Lord, if it be thou, if you be the investment, bid that I come unto the water with thee. In the name of Jesus, Jesus said unto him, the investment said, come on, let me deposit something into your heart. Let me deposit something into your mouth. The word is not thee, even in the mouth and in the heart. That is the word of faith that we preach. Come on, Peter. Hallelujah. Let me drop some investment into you. I'm going to drop you a mustard seed of faith. And all I need you to do is climb up on top of it. I just need you to climb on top of this invested word and come on and walk on this water with me, son. And when Peter received the investment, when Peter was come down, see, when Peter was come, see, we're, gonna, we're using that word C-O-M-E since Peter used the word C, since that's the investment that Peter wanted from the Lord, in the name of Jesus, Peter come down out of the ship. He walked on the water because he had the investment. See, you can walk on top of your bills when you got money. Hallelujah. Don't you know, hallelujah, that Psalms 107 and 20 says, He sent his word and healed them and delivered them out of from their destructions in the name of Jesus. If you got the word of God in the name of Jesus, you got the investment. God has invested in you a word that'll get you the healing that you so desire in the name of Jesus. He said to Peter, come on, Peter, take a hold of this invested word that I'm going to give back to you. For asking me for it. God will withhold no good thing from you. God ain't going to withhold nothing good from you. Uh-uh. 
God going to give it to you. He going to give it to you. Peter was come down out of the ship. He walked on the water to go to the investor. Hallelujah. See, you need an investor to help you to know how to invest in the right thing that's going to cause you to prosper, to cause you to have some profitable gains. You need an investor in the name of Jesus. David said, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. Acknowledge the investor in all his ways and he shall direct thy path so that you can have profitable gains. At the end of your faith for believing in him. Peter came down out of the ship and then he began to walk on the water to go to the investor. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. Let them get boisterous past the king. Let the stock market crash. Let it do what it want to do. You just keep on walking by faith. I promise you, nothing's going to happen to your profitable gain in the name of Jesus. I know uh, that the enemy was able uh, to touch Job in every facet of his life. Uh, hallelujah, there were some boisterous winds blowing in Job's life. Job had to deal with Satan putting the flick in his body. Then he had to deal with his three friends that thought Job had did something wrong. But all God was trying to do was establish Job on his most holy investment. That's all he was trying to do was to show Job that his investment was a good investment. God bless you, boo-boo. Thank you for joining your daddy this morning. Hallelujah. Don't y'all act like Y'all don't know what it means to invest in something. In the name of Jesus, God has invested in us. He has dealt to every man a measure of faith. Hallelujah. God knew what he was doing. Hallelujah. When Peter saw the wind boisterous, see, when y'all start seeing stuff, the only reason why you seeing this stuff it's because the enemy is trying to make you think uh, that that valuable investment of faith that you have uh, ain't valuable. God doesn't make bad investments. Tell him, Pastor King. Tell him. God don't make bad investments. When God called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, he knew what he was calling and he knew what he was going to invest in. In the name of Jesus, don't you let nobody tell you nothing about yourself. You let the word of God tell you about yourself. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus. Peter saw the wind boisterous and then he became afraid. Make up your mind, Peter. Either you're going to be afraid when he comes walking on the water or either you're going to be afraid of the wind. Make up your mind what you going to be afraid of in the name of Jesus. But if Jesus has invested you with the word of God, you don't have to fear nothing that this earth tries to do to you in the name of Jesus. Oh yeah, Pastor King, people might think we are bad investment, but God does not. He sure does not. God looks at you as the apple of his eye. The reason why God looks at you as the apple of his eye is because God is love. And God can't be nothing but love in the name of Jesus. Peter began to get afraid. And when you start getting afraid, you're going to start sinking in the name of Jesus. But in the midst of his sinking, Peter had enough common sense to know that the investor was still there because the investor says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. All you got to do is draw nigh to me and I will draw nigh unto you. Peter began to sink and he cried, investor, 
save me. Investor, save me. And immediately the investor, the word of God made flesh, stretched forth his hand and caught him. See, God will stretch forth his hand and he will catch your finances. He will catch your health. He will catch your children. He will catch your family members. He will catch them people on your job. God will stretch forth his hand. The investor will stretch forth his hand and catch you. But he's going to say something to you. He's going to say something to you though. Don't think he's just going to stretch forth his hand and catch you and not say something. The investor stretched forth his hand and he called Peter and then he said unto him, O thou of little investment, O thou of little investment, wherefore did it to doubt? Because you had the investment. You had the word that will not return unto me void. You had the word that will prosper into the thing whereto I sent it. You had the word in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus. Hallelujah. One word. One word from God's son is all, is all the investment you need. Hallelujah. All you need is one word from God's son. Hallelujah. To solve every problem that you have in your life. He that have God's son's word has the investment. First John 5 and 12 says, He that have the son have life. He that have the investor has the investment. He that has the investor has the investment. And he that have not the investor of God have not eternal life, the investment that God wants us to have when we believe in his son, Jesus Christ. According to Romans 12 and 3, we have this investment. God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Today, every person on earth is in possession of this investment. We receive it by grace, but do not believe him at all. We receive God's investment by grace. It is by grace that you are saved. It is by grace that you are saved, not of works, through faith. It is by grace that you are saved through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. It is by grace that ye are saved through the investment, not of works, lest any man should boast. Every person on earth is in possession of this investment. We receive it by grace, but many of us do not believe him at all. Romans 1 and 16, Paul says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the investment of God under salvation to everyone that believeth. See, that, that, that this entire investment, this entire investment that, that we're talking about here it deals with believing. So if you don't be, so if God God can invest in you all he wants, but if you don't believe the investment, it's not gonna work on you. The Bible says Jesus could not do many works in the city that he came from because the people didn't believe in him. The people didn't believe in him. Hallelujah. I'm not ashamed of the investment. I'm not ashamed of the word of God, my invested measure. Hallelujah. God has given me an invested measure of the word of God, and I am not ashamed of it. Hallelujah. You have to know you are a good investment. Tell them, Pastor King, they got to know they're a good investment, man. They're too busy letting the world, that Pastor King, they believe more of what the world say they are than what the word of God says they are. Oh, Sister Selena, we got to know that we are good investment. And that's the reason why we encounter the trials of life that we have. Because we know that our faith 
is much more precious than gold. The investment that invested measure that God gave you in Romans chapter 12 verse 3 is more precious than gold. And the enemy got to have it. In the name of Jesus, you are a, a good investment. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. God, we are God's investment. And we need to be faithful. Hallelujah. We are God's investment. And we need to be faithful. Look at what Isaiah 43, 1 and 2 says. It says, but now saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel. Fear not. See, I was going to tell you to fear because the investment, the enemy is after the investment. And so when he comes, and Jesus says in John 10 and 10 that he was coming, the thief cometh not but for to steal, kill, and destroy. But I came that you may have the investment and that you may have it more abundantly. Jesus, the Lord says, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. God, God come on now. If you've been redeemed, you better believe everything God done redeemed is a good investment. You better know that. Hallelujah. I have called thee by my name. Thou art mine. You are a good investment to me. In the name of Jesus, you are such a good investment to me that when thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee because you are a good investment. I have put you inside of my son. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. You are a good investment. And when you pass through the waters, I will be with thee. Hallelujah. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. Hallelujah. When thou walkest, through the fire, hallelujah, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee, because you are a good investment, and if you remain faithful to what I've invested in you, you will walk through the rivers, you will walk through fires, you'll do things that men normally couldn't do. In the name of Jesus, you'll be able to do them. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The psalmist said in Psalms 119 and 11, thy word, thy invested word, thy word have I hidden in my heart. See, you got to hide it in your heart. Hallelujah. The word of a hidden in my heart. That I might not sin against thee. That I might not begin to operate in the mindset of unbelief. God bless you, Kobe. Hallelujah, my classmate. I love you. Thank you for joining me this morning. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, teach us to pray. Hallelujah, Lord, teach us to pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ who you have vested in. See, God is vested in you. See, you know, you know more about your stupid 401k than you do the word of God. You know more about your bank account than you do the word of God. You know how much your job going to invest in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, teach us to pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ who you have vested in. In the name of Jesus. I just left the job. Hallelujah. When I took the job, the job gave good 401k benefits. Hallelujah. But Pastor King, Sister Selena, my, cut, my classmate Kobe, my brother Chucky, my son Reggie, Hallelujah. But they told me I had to stay with that company. 
for three years in order for me to be vested with them. I had to stay three years, but don't you know, once you come up out of water baptism, you are vested in the word of God. You don't have to wait three years. Hallelujah. He begins to match you dollar for dollar. Hallelujah. From faith to faith, God begins to be vested in you. That job said, you're going to have to be with us three years before you're vested with us. Hallelujah. The word of God told me from the time I repented. Hallelujah. And was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins that he would consider me vested and he would give me the gift of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. From the beginning of time, Starting with the breath of life in the Adam's nostrils, God's will has been to invest Christ into men. But men have chosen to invest their lives in the money, in the drugs and alcohol, into adultery, in the fornication, in the organizations, into the LGBT community, in the NAACP mess. Hallelujah. From the beginning of time, starting with the breath of life in the Adam's nostrils, God's will has been to invest Christ into men. But men have chosen to invest their lives into other mess. Look at what Romans chapter 3, verse 10 and 12 and 23 says. There is none righteous, not even one. Yet God still sent his son to die on the cross for us. There is no one who understands, yet God still invested his son into us. There is none who seeks God. Yet God still invested his son into us. All have turned away. They have together become worthless. Yet God still invested his son into us. Hallelujah. There is none. There is no one who does good. Not even one. Yet God still invested his son into us. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, yet God still invested his son into us. God knew there was no safe investment when he sent his son. God knew there was no safe investment, but he sent him anyway. Because whether or not we believe in Christ, Christ believes in 1 Peter 2 and 23. God knew that there was no safe investment when he sent his son because all has sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Paul calls us wretched men. God knew there was no safe investment when he sent his son, but he sent him anyway. Because whether or not we believe in Christ, Christ believes in 1 Peter 1 and 23, having been born again. See, having been born again, because Christ knew that some people, some of the non-safe invested people was going to begin to believe in him. And once they believe and be born again, he knew that having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible through the word of God, which lie and lives and abides forever. See, some of us have been born again. 
Some of us been born again. Hallelujah. We've been born again, not a corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. Christ knows. Christ knows that you have been born again of the incorruptible word of God, a word which lives and abides forever. Christ knows this. Hallelujah. Pastor Red is not and never will be a safe investment. I am not and never will be a safe investment. But that corruptible seed he preaches, that corruptible seed I preach, hallelujah, hallelujah, is not a corruptible seed, but is an incorruptible seed, hallelujah, by the word of God, which lives and abides forever. See, Pastor Red still got to deal with the sin in his body. Hallelujah, Pastor Red still got to allow the word of God to have the preeminence over my life. In the name of Jesus, Pastor Red is not nor ever will be a safe investment for you to trust and believe in. Uh-uh, the word of God has never instructed us to invest any faith in men. The word of God has never instructed us to invest any faith in men. Mark 10 and 27, Jesus says, with men it is impossible. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Pastor Red is not and never will be a safe investment for you because Pastor Red is a man and with men it is impossible but not with God, for with God, all things are possible. It is my job to bring you to Christ, not for you, me to bring you to me. With God, all things are possible. Why? Because all things of God arise from an incorruptible seed which lives and abides forever. Hallelujah. You have to know. Oh, yeah, Pastor King, I had to break myself down in order to build myself up. Pastor Red is not and never will be a safe investment, but the life that I live is a good investment. You got to know that the life that you live is a good investment. Hallelujah. The Bible says, by faith, Enoch. It didn't say Enoch. Uh-uh. It didn't say Enoch. See, that's what I'm trying to say. It doesn't say by, it doesn't say Enoch. Uh-uh. The investment, it was by the investment that Enoch was able to do something. By the investment, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him for before this, his testimony, his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. He respected, he obeyed, he walked by the investment. God has invested the same amount of faith. God bless you, Sister King, I love you. God has invested the same amount of faith that Enoch has into you and I as well. We are without excuse. God is not a respect of persons. Enoch was the sixth man from Adam. You think I'm lying to you? Read Genesis chapter five and you'll see how it speaks of Adam became then Seth, hallelujah, came from him. And then it begins to talk the lineage until it gets to the sixth person. And it talks about Enoch, but he still came from Adam. 
Enoch was still a sinner, but he walked by faith. God translated Enoch because of the investment. God translated the three Hebrew boys from the fiery furnace because of the investment. God has invested the same amount of faith that Enoch has in the you and I as well. We are without excuse for not walking victorious. The sower soweth the word. Jesus was the investor. God was the investor who sowed his son into something that was not worth investing into. But the love of God thought that we were. So he sent his son to a people that he was taking a chance that they might believe on his son. And the majority of them ended up killing him on the cross. But the sower, sower of the word. Look at this right here. Let me teach it. Genesis 1 and 11. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the earth yielding seed, and let the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. God, the investor, sowed his word into the earth. The earth brought forth fruit trees yielding fruit after his kind. Nowhere in this verse does it say that the fruit trees brought forth leaves. Mark 11, 12 through 14 and 20 through 22. And on the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, the invested word of God was hungry in his earth suit and seeing a fig tree. Hallelujah. Not a leaf tree, but a fig tree. Y'all gonna hear me today. Let the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind. Seeing a fig tree, he never saw the leaves. He never saw the leaves. This verse says uh, he saw a fig tree afar off having leaves. Hallelujah. See what he should have done. He should have saw a fig tree yielding figs uh, having leaves. He should have saw a fig tree afar off yielding figs, having leaves. But he didn't. He saw a fig tree afar off not having figs, but having leaves. And he came, if happily, he might find anything thereon because the sower soweth the word and the word only brings forth fruit. If happily, when he came to it, he was happy to come upon it, that he might find some figs thereupon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves. Just like he come to some of y'all. He ain't finding nothing but this mess. That's all he finding. He finding this mess right here when it comes to you. Looking for you to love somebody. Looking for you to give somebody some joy, some peace, some long suffering, some meekness, some kindness, some temperance, 
and he's finding this mess. He came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of figs was not yet. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season. You better, you better produce fruit. You better produce fruit when the word of God, the one, so I'm trying to figure out, why are you standing out there doing exactly what, the, so the earth did its job, the earth took the seed, the earth grew the seed, because it's what the word of God said. The earth grew the seed, the seed became a tree, and when the tree got big, the tree became independent of what it was that it was created for. We were created to worship God, not to go out and join this mess. That was not what we was born again of incorruptible seed by the word of God for. We was born of incorruptible seed by the word of God to produce fruit. But when he came to it, he found nothing thereon. And when he came to it, he didn't find nothing for the times of figs were not yet. And Jesus answered and said unto it, no man eat fruit of the hereafter forever. He said, no man, eat, you, you, you're not going to give, if you're not going to give the one that created you fruit, then you better not give a sinful man none of my, no fruit. If you're not going to feed my sheep, then you better not feed nobody else's sheep. Let no man eat fruit of the hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. And in the morning, and in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. You know what, you know what, people don't even, people don't even see ministries dried up by the roots. People don't even see that. People don't even see it. So what these, dried up pastors do as they go start churches somewhere else. Yeah, I said it. You got these dried up men that don't know how to love their wife go over there and make another woman think he gonna love her. You got this dried up woman that think that they got this other man that don't know how to love on the husband to go over there with a dried up tail and love on another man. Yeah, dried up, dried up love. Hallelujah, ain't hallelujah. Go before a man or woman of God, speak a vow, say I love him, I love her, invested in one another, and then go and cheat on one another. Because they invested. And then they, they dried up self. They go as if they're going to produce the fruit of love in another relationship. With they dried up self. Because they don't got the incorruptible word on the inside of them. But they got stupid church leaders they keep on letting them get away with that mess. In the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig leaf, the fig tree, dried up from the roots. Mm -mm. I'm not just going to dry you up in the branches. I'm not just going to dry you up in the bark. I'm going to dry you up from the roots. Because you got to start at the root of the problem. The root of the problem is you don't know how to be faithful. The root of the problem is you don't know how to love nobody. The root of the problem is you keep investing in mess that God has not told you to invest in. Hallelujah. And Peter calling to remembrance 
saith unto him, Word of God. Behold, the fig tree which thou cursest is withered away. And Jesus answering saith unto him, Your investment should be in God. You should have your investment in God. The fig tree should have been invested in God, should have had fruit on it when I showed up. Christ, God's investment, is the word of God moving in your life, causing you to be more than a conqueror or you're being conquered. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus. Hallelujah. He's love. He's love. He's love. He's love. Come on now. Father. that investment give them the investment they need God and teach them to love the fruit of the spirit love one another that heaven a place a place in their hearts cause Jesus invested love in us he won't let you and it won't let you down and I know he forever ah, in my heart we got to walk on we got to walk on you got the investment Walk on through temptation Cause And his wisdom And his wisdom Will be Will be our hand. You have the investment You have it you Know the truth The investment The investment Will be our salvation Lift up our The investment will not let you down. Oh, he's mine, he's mine, he's mine, oh mine. Forever. Get my baby boy, what's the investment? I want to follow your investment wherever it leads me. I don't mind, Lord. I hope you don't mind. I want to walk with the investment. Talk with the investment. Do all the things you want me to do. Come on, Jesus. Jesus is
investment. Call the investment. You can call that investment. That investment is still there. The investment ain't went nowhere. You just won't talk to it. You just don't believe in it. The investment. The investment. Hallelujah. The investment in the name of Jesus. The investment. God's investment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's investment. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 3 and 6, Paul says, I plan it. That's all Pastor Red can do is plant. Hallelujah. Apollo's water. Pastor King comes behind. Amen. With spirit of liberty's ministry. And then he begins to water. But it is God that gives the increase. Only God is going to increase your investment. He's going to take your investment from faith to faith. God is your investment. Christ. The Son of God was given to us, and whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life in the name of Jesus. Thank you for joining me today. Nothing without you, but I'm everything with you. I will see you on Tuesday night at 7 p.m. with Pastor King at Spirit of Liberty's Ministries, and then I will be back before you on Thursday night at 7 p.m. with a word from God so that we can help you, hallelujah, with your investment, the process of investing something of value for profitable gain in the name of Jesus. Thank you for joining me today. I love you, nothing without you, everything with you. May God prosper you until we meet again. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen.